This is my cat, Theo, by the way. Hi guys, my name is Elise. I am a high school leader at the Brader Way site. Shout out to Brader Way. And I am from Chicago. I am newer to the Madison area. I moved here a little over a year ago. And I grew up in a Christian family. I am the middle child of four of us. So for all my middle children out there, I know you feel my pain. <laughs> As much as I love my siblings, and right now we're really close, but growing up was hard. Being the middle child, I constantly definitely felt compared to them. There are literally home videos of both my sisters together when we're kids, playing piano and singing, and I come in to the room and they both tell me to leave, so, I mean, to this day, I'm still insecure about not having that good of a singing voice. That's something that still definitely affects me. When I was a freshman in high school, my older sister was a senior. I remember going to her talent show and she wrote a song, she was performing it, and it was amazing. And I, you know, love my sister and always want to support her. But I remember one of my friends, after she sang, looked to me in front of my entire friend group and said, Elise, what would you ever do in a talent show? You have no talent. And, and they all laughed and then went along. And I'm sure you guys know, I mean, especially for something to happen publicly for your friends to say that, it was super embarrassing. It was super, uh, yeah, dehumanizing. I had a lot of conflict with my dad. Uh, him and I didn't see eye to eye. He was really hard on me and that definitely did not help my feelings of not being good enough and my feelings of being compared to and feeling less than and you know i grew up going to church i still went to church throughout all of this throughout high school but i just felt like i couldn't be honest i felt in some senses like i had to wear a mask and i don't mean a mask like you guys know when it comes to covid obviously that didn't happen yet but more in a figurative sense of feeling like I had to act like I was this good person, that I didn't have these troubles, these struggles, these questions. I didn't know where Jesus was in all of that. I grew up hearing about him, how good he is, how loving he is, but why would he let me go through that and be embarrassed and be constantly talked down to and compared to my siblings? I didn't understand that. One night, my mom actually told me that she invited this woman named Kala in. She, at the time, was about 10 years older than me. And she came actually to hang out with my sister. She worked for the church. And I kind of rolled my eyes when I heard that at first, like, okay, another person from church, here we go. But when she came over, her and I ended up really getting along. And it was one of the first times I felt like someone from church, or just a Christian for that matter, was really relatable. I could ask her everything. The questions that were really dark inside of me, maybe I'd never voiced before. The questions of doubt, the questions if, if God is real, where is he? And she didn't judge me. She was so loving to me and she'd give me truth back. And I remember her continuously saying, Elise, you need to, you know, run to Jesus and figure out if you want to follow him or not. He loves you so much. And she'd constantly talk about the potential she saw in me that I never saw in myself. And she actually ended up baptizing me. So that was really cool. But at the time, I, I knew she was right. I couldn't keep faking it. I couldn't keep wearing this mask. I had to decide, am I gonna follow Jesus or not? Is it worth it to be all in for him, to, you know, to love him, to wanna be like him? I had to decide that. So I have such a vivid memory before Kala came into my life of sitting in study hall. Don't know if you guys still have that, but I was sitting in study hall and I looked up at the ceiling and I remember saying, God, I know you're real, but I don't love you and I don't feel like you love me. So fast forward to, you know, Kala coming into my life and challenging me to, to get to know Jesus, to read my Bible. I did that super, I was such a skeptic. I was so 
had so many doubts and I told him, I told him I was mad at him. I told Jesus, you know, where were you? I asked him these questions and I was met with such love and understanding and I can't even accurately describe how much I felt like Jesus was meeting me where I was at, how I could feel his presence, how I could sense that he was not only welcoming my questions, but he wanted me to ask them. He wanted me to get to know him. He wanted to show me who he was and he could handle that. But it gave me this confidence that I have a purpose, that even when it's hard, even through those feelings of not feeling good enough, I could come to him and ask him about that. Even with the conflict with, conflict with my dad, I could come to him and, and ask him what I should do, how I should feel, what's the truth here. And that was really helpful to me. And all that to say is Jesus is someone who gives life a purpose. He makes your life worth living even through the hardships, even through the darkness, even through, you know, friendship problems, even through parental issues with your mom or dad or whoever, or siblings feeling constantly compared to. He's not gonna, you know, instantly fix all your problems and circumstances, but he's gonna help you navigate them. And he's gonna give you this confidence and this hope and this love and, you know, show you who you are in him and how much he loves you. And for me, that was life-changing. And the verse that really got me through so many hard times to this day is Romans 8:28, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose.